time. We're starting with a sec second panel, and we'll start with uh, Dr. Roger Strasser. So for you, the question is, uh, in, no in your Northern Ontario School of Medicine in Canada, you have developed what something which is called distributed community-engaged learning as its distinctive model of socially accountable education with over 70 community teaching sites. Can you please outline the findings of a study of the socio-economic impact of what the Northern Ontario School of Medicine has put in place? Okay, so maybe just to say, tell you a little bit more about Northern Ontario and Northern Ontario School of Medicine to then set the scene for this study which we, which we did. Northern Ontario is a vast and relatively underserved part of, of Canada, mostly rural. Uh, in fact, uh, it, it, geographically, it's Germany and France put together uh, with a relatively small population, around 800,000 people, and mostly those people are in small communities, large distances between them. The Northern Ontario School of Medicine came into existence as a result of a widespread community movement. This was in around the year 2000, 2001. A widespread community movement that said if we're ever going to turn around the chronic shortage of doctors and other health professionals, if we're ever going to improve the health status of the people and the communities of Northern Ontario, we need our own standalone Northern Ontario School of Medicine. So that's how the school came into existence. The school uh, serves as the Faculty of Medicine of two universities, Lakehead University in Thunder Bay, Laurentian University in Sudbury, and they're 1,000 kilometres apart. And, uh, uh, and we, we view the whole of Northern Ontario as the campus of Northern Ontario School of Medicine. The school has a social accountability mandate. That's a commitment to be responsive to the needs of the people and communities of Northern Ontario with a focus on improving the health of the people. So in that context, we, we, deliver, we developed, uh, as you said, uh, distributed community engaged learning as our distinctive model of medical education. And this involves uh, having the teaching and learning activities happening at multiple locations, uh, uh, over 70 locations, uh, sometimes uh, synchronously and sometimes asynchronously. And, we, and to do this, of course, we make uh, heavy use of electronic communications. Uh, the community engaged part is also very important. That is the active community participation uh, in the de development and delivery of our, our curriculum and the experience of our, our learners in these communities. So that gives you a, a snapshot of Northern Ontario and Northern Ontario School of Medicine. As you can imagine, with the large distances, the transport communication costs and so on, uh, the cost per student per year is, is higher than in the, uh, in the sort of traditional model of a medical school in, in a large city with, a, with a, a teaching hospital and the like. And so it raises the question about well, this may be best practice, but is it, is it a best buy? So several years ago, we did this study where we looked at the socioeconomic impact of Northern Ontario School of Medicine. The year that we looked at, uh, the budget for the school, that's taxpayers' money, was $37 million, and, and the, the economist found that the level of new economic activity was something between 67 and $82 million. So that's a more than two for one multiplier effect from, from that investment. They also found economic growth, that's new jobs, and economic development, that's new job categories that we wouldn't have in Northern Ontario if we didn't have uh, the Northern Ontario School of Medicine. So certainly impressive economic impact, and, we, and in fact, uh, a further analysis has shown that, that this, this impact isn't just in the larger population centres, uh, uh, Thunder Bay is about 120,000 population and Sudbury about 150,000 population, but right across the communities, more or less proportional to the number of students that, that we have uh, in a particular community. So that's the economic impact. Then there's the social impact. and, and uh, the researchers did find that what they did was, was uh, interview individuals, uh, community leaders, and in individual and in groups. And, and, this, uh, and what they found was certainly positive. That is, improved uh, retention and recruitment of health professionals for the hospitals and health services, and, and the same for the universities, improved uh, retention and recruitment of students and faculty members as well. 
But probably what was most interesting was actually the finding in the communities. This, uh, this part of the study was done in 2009, so just after the global financial crisis, and uh, the, the economy of Northern Ontario is very much the resource-based economy, so things were looking pretty bleak economically in Northern Ontario at that time. So you would have expected that the people in the communities would be really quite pessimistic about the future. In fact, uh, the researchers found the opposite. The people were optimistic about the future and they connected that to the Northern Ontario School of Medicine. And it wasn't just about more doctors and access to healthcare. These people had been part of the community movement the, that established the school. And actually, there was a sense of empowerment. If we can do a successful medical school, we can do anything. And so I, I think we've shown by this study that there, that there is a a significant return in, in, on investment of, in establishing a distributed medical school that's, that really you can only see if you step back and look at the big picture and don't just look at the, the, the costs of the inputs, but actually, uh, as I say, look at the big picture. And we certainly have specific examples now in communities where our graduates are practicing. So we had, we, the school opened in 2005, uh, the first graduations were in 2009. And we now have our own graduates practicing in many of these small communities. Uh, probably the standout example is a, is a community in, uh, called Chaplot, which is a population of about 3,000 people, two hours from anywhere. And Chaplot went for uh, nearly seven years without a permanent doctor, just uh, fill in, loc locum doctors coming and going, which of course is very expensive for the Ministry of Health to, to support. Since uh, July of 2012, they have three homegrown doctors in Chapleau. So these are three people who grew up in Chapleau. Uh, they studied medicine uh, and did their postgraduate uh, training in family medicine with Northern Ontario School of Medicine and now are pro providing health care in their home community. In fact, one of those uh, doctors is actually an a in Indigenous doctor of First Nations and she's serving her own uh, First Nation community as well. So I, I, I guess the important message out of this study is to look at the big picture and, and recognise that uh, there's a wider return on investment both from a financial perspective and, and a social perspective as well. Thanks a lot, uh, Roger, for this fantastic example that definitely investing in health is bringing return.